Uh, man, this toy is a piece of garbage. Wait a minute. This toy is a piece of garbage. Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Renzels, Muckman and Joe Eyeball. What an amazingly disgusting duo. Just by a little bit. These guys have to be the grossest TMNT toys of all time, closely followed by Scumbug and Worm. This dude just oozes with filth. Everywhere you look, you find more and more junk. The Playmate sculptors that sculpted this really outdid themselves. I mean, come on, look at this thing. Uh, in my opinion, 1990 was the craziest year in the TMNT toy line. 88 and 89 were awesome, but still, you know, a little subdued. Then 90 hit, and you got the grossest, most detailed turtle toys of all time. Even 91 cooled things down, you know, a little bit, despite still being awesome. 90 was the height of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle gross factor, and Muckman was the rotten cherry sitting on top of the ooze-filled cake. The back of Muckman's card says that he was mutated with muck and transformed with trash. Uh, this fuming former sewer worker oozes mysteriously through the city's sewer systems, searching for morsels of muck, sludge, and slime. I must not have paid too much attention when I was a kid, because I always thought Muckman was a bad guy, but nope, he's a good guy. The card even says the turtles like Muckman because, or they, they think Muckman's cool because he looks like a pepperoni pizza. Really? Maybe they actually do like penicillin on their pizza. The card just says that Joe Eyeball is uh, Muckman's parasite pal. Uh, you know, there's no other origin or anything. Apparently, he uh, decomposes through sewer pipes and he can see through the sickest of sewer stench. Um... Okay, <laughs> 1990 was the first year to introduce uh, little packing buddies, and Joe Eyeball is just a perfect match for Muckman. I like Joe Eyeball a lot. You know, he's pretty gross, and he's kind of weird looking. He almost kind of looks like an alien. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, I was always upset about my Muckman and Joe Eyeball, uh, not because there was anything wrong with them, but because the first day that I got them, I lost Joe Eyeball, uh, I was in like first grade and my mom took me to some woman's house who had a son. I think my mom was having like a home interior party or something like that. And I brought a few guys with me so I could play with the kid there, including Muckman, because I just got him that day. And I was so excited to play with him and, you know, play with other kids Ninja Turtle toys at the same time. And we played outside in his backyard and he had like a hill and it, we were playing in the grass. And eventually, you know, it became nighttime and I lost Joe Eyeball somewhere in the grass. And I was just, I remember like digging through the grass trying to find him, but he was never to be found. Pretty sad, right? Well, don't be sad, be happy. Because uh, this is a great year to be a Muckman fan. Uh, we have two, that's right, two new Muckman coming. Uh, one from NECA and one from Super 7. Both I'll discuss briefly in this video. So let's get moving here. Before I review the 1990 figure, I'll talk about Muckman across the TMNT franchises. Uh, talk about how they turned this super detailed toy into a simplified cartoon design. Talk briefly about the new NECA toy that's coming out. Um, talk about Muckman in the 2012 show. And quickly look at the Super 7 figure. Um, and then after that, I'll finally... <laughs> I'll finally review the, the 1990 figure and, uh, you know, show this guy with some ooze. He's got a pretty cool action feature. So let's get started here. To begin with, Muckman is not from the original Mirage comics. You know, he, he never showed up in any of these issues. Um, and surprisingly, he never showed up in any of the, uh, the Archie comics, the Teenage Mutant Turtle Adventure uh, books. And most recently, he's uh, never even shown up in the IDW comic books. I think he's shown up in the uh, the IDW comics that are based on the 2012 cartoon. But the regular, like, ongoing IDW series, you know, he's he's never been in that. Now, you'd think that, uh, like, he would have been in Archie Comics just because the writer, Dean Clarion, or um, uh, Stephen Murphy, <laughs> you know, he wrote so many stories that were very, like, eco-friendly, and I could, 
Like, you just hear the name Muckman, and the story, you know, just writes itself in your head. Like, how this guy would have fit in perfectly with, uh, you know, Stephen Murphy's environmental uh, comic books. So, like I said, his comic book history is pretty light, so there's nothing really here. Now, I can't believe this, but I do have to mention it because I put this up here. Um, this was not... You'd think that this book, being such a... Uh, you know, environmental friendly book that it would have been written by Stephen Murphy, but no, it's not. The script is by Paul Castiglia and Dan Necrosis. Although Stephen Murphy slash Dean Claren uh, did the edits on this, so he worked on it. But like I said, you, can you blame me for thinking that he probably wrote this? Muckman only appeared in one episode of the original Fred Wolf series, and that was in season five the episode was called muckman messes up so it should be pretty easy to find if you're looking for it and uh, it, it premiered in september of 1991 so that was one year after the toy release so you know muckman was probably still on the shelf just waiting for you to see this 22 minute long commercial mom buy me muckman in the cartoon muckman is the trash man garson grunge uh, he and his partner, Joe Junkie, that's not the greatest name for a, a character in a kid's show, uh, they're picking up trash outside of Tropotron Labs, when all of a sudden, Bebop and Rocksteady dump a mysterious new mutagen on them. Uh, this mutagen mutates them into the abominations you see before you. I gotta say, uh, the transformation is pretty boring. They just kind of glow, and then they appear as Muckman and Joe Eyeball. They're not even standing in the same positions. I mean, come on. You know, if it was, you'd, you'd want to see them, like, mutate and turn into these guys. But no, that's not going to happen in this show. Um, all right. So the mutagen also causes Muckman to ooze goo. And this goo reacts with the mutagen in the turtles. And it causes them to become weak. This wouldn't be a problem if the turtles and Muckman were best buds. But in true superhero fashion, Muckman starts out as an enemy of the turtles, blaming them for his uh, misfortune. Uh, thanks to some shoddy reporting. Eventually, April proves to Muckman that the turtles were innocent, and, you know, the turtles and Muckman become best buds. Donatello develops an antidote so that the turtles won't become weakened from uh, Muckman's goo. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a fight in the Technodrome, the turtles win, the Shredder loses, and, you know, Muckman decides to stay a hero indefinitely. Another thing that I have to mention is that uh, in the cartoon, Muckman talks like Jackie Gleason. So, you know, he sounds a lot like Ralph from the Honeymooners. And Joe Eyeball talks like Art Carney. But uh, Rob Paulson never goes full uh, Yogi Bear. He's never like, hey, hey Muckman, you, uh, after we defeat these turtles, you want to get some picnic baskets? So, as you can imagine, when they made Muckman in the cartoon, they had to simplify him a lot. Uh, the bony hands are gone. A lot of garbage is missing. Um, you know, some things are still there, but in general, he's nowhere near as cool, you know. He comes off as a little goofy instead of gross and kind of creepy like the toy. Um, I think the, the problem is Muckman's color. When you have this uh, highly detailed toy in this dirty green color, it looks fine because uh, you can't stop looking at all the crazy details. Like, he looks, uh, like, contaminated with mud, muck, and garbage, but... In the cartoon, most of his body is just kind of bumpy looking. So having this bumpy, undefined body makes him kind of look like a, a big green pile of poop. The face on the original toy is like one of the coolest looking faces ever, with his beard and mustache being made of octopus legs. Uh, in the cartoon, this is this is just uh, boring, um, you know, and kind of goofy looking. You know, it doesn't it it doesn't look like octopus tentacles. It's I don't know. You know, like I understand, uh, like I said, I understand that they needed to do this. You know, you have to simplify things because it'll take too long to animate. And, uh, you know, it's amazing that we got Muckman in the cartoon at all. But I don't know. It's just kind of a letdown. If you had the toy first and then saw this, uh, I think you would have been disappointed. I think because of this, you know, there was some controversy when NECA announced their brand new Muckman. People saw this guy and they said, why doesn't he look as cool as the old toy? But, you know, the purpose of this line is to be as faithful to the original show as possible, not to be as faithful to the original toy line as possible. So, you know, considering that, I think they did a, a really good job here. 
Um, I think a lot of the details are accurate, like the stomach contents match how he looks in the show. I think that's all good. I think uh, you, you could possibly say that he's not as bulky as he should be. He might, you know, could be a little bigger, but that's kind of like been a, a thing for me with a lot of the NECA toys is I always feel like they should be bulkier and kind of bulgier or something like that. Um, and my minor nitpick with this Muckman is the shape of the head. Uh, in the cartoon, his head is more of like a ball. It's kind of circular and that kind of matches the original toy a little closer where the head on this uh, new NECA toy looks more like a like an oval it's like a, a stretched out ball it's it's not as round as i think it should be joe eyeball i think looks great i think they nailed the expression on his face uh, so i think that's all good and uh when this guy comes out i'll do a, a more thorough review i guess i should mention though that uh, i do like his accessories a lot i think it's awesome that uh he's coming with some mutagen or some ooze that's great and uh i also like this uh this this gun he has and at first i thought maybe this is like muckman's rocket launcher or the the muck gun from the original toy line so i watched the episode to try to see if he actually uses it in the episode he didn't use it and then of course in my head i'm like oh good and just gracious like now i have to hunt down what this thing is but uh i found out that it's actually called the rockalizer and um it's actually used by the the uh the rock soldiers muckman never showed up in the 2003 series but there is a character named Garbage Man. However, don't get your hopes up because everybody seems to hate Garbage Man. Um, he's probably one of the lesser liked enemies in this uh, 2003 show. And he's, he's nothing, he has nothing to do with Muck Man. I just wanted to say that if you saw an episode called Garbage Man and you thought, oh, is that Muck Man? No, it's not Muck Man. Uh, Garbage Man lives on a landfill island and uh, he kidnaps homeless people so he can turn them into slaves. Kind of like that fat dude on the Batman the Animated Series in the episode The Forgotten. In the 2012 series, Muckman actually makes a few uh, appearances, uh, mostly as a human and then a couple of times as the mutant Muckman. First, he makes an appearance in the season one episode It Came From the Depths as Garson Grunge. Uh, he appears in the season two episodes uh, invasion of the Squirrelanoids, Fungus Humongous, and Pizza Face. Uh, again, just like most of the time, he just kind of shows up in cameos. You know, he, he's not doing anything too important. And uh, Muckman is actually a poster uh, in Mikey's room uh, during the Squirrelanoids episode. And last, uh, Garson Grunge shows up as a human in the Season 3 episode, Battle for New York. Garson Grunge finally mutates into Muckman in the Season 3 episode, The Noxious Avenger. Uh, the title is obviously a spoof of the Toxic Avenger, or for the PG crowd, the, uh, the Toxic Crusader. Uh, unlike the Fred Wolf series, the Turtles are pretty much responsible for Muckman's transformation. During a battle with Bebop and Rocksteady, Bebop throws a canister of mutagen at Mikey. Uh, Mikey ducks and irresponsibly lets that mutagen fly right out the window where it lands on Garbage Man Garson Grunge below. Um, at first, Muckman is an enemy of the Turtles, but as usual, he becomes a buddy of theirs. And, uh, you know, I like this episode a lot. There's this whole thing where Muckman is kind of like a reluctant hero. And um, I don't know, it's very entertaining and a very, very good episode. You should check it out. Also, Muckman just looks amazing. I mean, uh, it's extremely close to the original toy. You know, he's got one skeleton hand. He's got mushrooms on his shoulders. Uh, he's got a, a hole through his stomach. He's got one trash can foot and a sewer lid foot. Uh, the clothespin on the nose. He, ha he, he even has telekinetic powers, which is, you know, that's new. But when he uses them, you can see his brain underneath his, uh, his, uh, his dome cap or whatever it is the, with the banana peel on top. Out of all the characters who show up from the original toy line, he is probably the closest to the source material. Uh, all he's missing is the octopus facial hair. Um, he even spits mutagen out of his mouth, just like the old toy. Um, just like the Fred Wolf show, the mutagen he, uh, weakens the turtles when they come in contact with it. You know, sometimes 3D shows play things safe. 
they keep things simple and never get crazy. And at first I thought that this TMNT cartoon seemed, uh, you know, a little sterile during season one. But I'm glad I stuck it out because episodes like this really made this whole series unique. Um, they actually got super gross here and pushed 3D to the limit. Uh, I like the two. I like the 2012 show a lot, and I highly recommend it. They even made uh, Muckman more gross than his original toy by adding these guts here in his his abdomen. You may be wondering about Joe Eyeball. Uh, in this cartoon, Joe Joe Eyeball is the disembodied eye of Muckman. Uh, because of this, I think his design is a little boring compared to the alien slug design of you know, the old toy line. But, you know, it is really entertaining to watch Muckman talk with Joe Eyeball, so I can't complain too much. It's still a very, very good episode. Muckman's final appearance in the cartoon is in the Season 3 episode, Annihilation Earth. And in that episode, he's a member of the Mighty Mutanimals. And when Earth gets destroyed, so does he. They actually released a, uh, a Muckman toy from the uh, 2012 show. I never bought it, but, you know, I'm going to have to because this thing looks awesome. You know, it looks like it's covered in detail and quite possibly may be one of the best toys in the whole line. All right. So now, after what felt like an eternity, it's time to talk about the actual Muckman 1990 action figure. Uh, you know, the amount of detail on this guy is exquisite, exquisitely disgusting. So let's take a closer look. All right, so first we gotta talk, let's, you know, let's talk about everything here from the head all the way down to the toes, right? Uh, first off, the head is covered in bumps. He's just got this gross, nasty looking head. That's awesome. Uh, there is this black bug on top and um, this black bug was actually included in the, uh, the cartoon design of the Fred Wolf series. So that's something that they kept. Um, up top here, you have the removable skull cap. It's actually called that on the back of the card. And, um, you know, this thing is just kind of, you know, it's kind of, it kind of looks like a hat. Um, it's got a banana peel on top. And if you can see underneath that banana peel, you can actually see his brains, which I showed you in the, uh, you know, they showed how the skull cap flew in the air and you could see the brains underneath in the, um, the 2012 cartoon. And you can just pop that thing off of there because if you want to, uh, you can put some muck or some ooze down there and have it drip out his mouth, which is pretty awesome. My actually has a, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's actually a cobweb in there. So, you know, that's very, that's keeping a very muck man. Um, I like the clothespin on his nose and on the card it explains that, you know, that is not there so that muck man can't smell. It's there so that Muckman can hold more of his muck in his body. If he didn't have that there, the muck would just keep dripping out of his nose, just like it drips out of his mouth. Um, so uh, around the, uh, the rim of this uh, skull cap, it's shaped just like the head here. So you can just pop that right back in place and line it up to where you need it. Um, I really like how his eyes are just bugging out of his head. And he just has this crazy look on his face, like these crazy teeth, this tongue sticking out. And when you have the ooze or the mutagen coming out, it just looks amazing. Now, one of my favorite details about his face, and I've mentioned it before, is the octopus facial hair. I think that's awesome. And, you know, it's weird because, um, like, uh, in the 2012 cartoon, you know, as Garson grunge, he didn't have any facial hair. And in the original Fred Wolf series, he didn't have any facial hair. Like, why wouldn't you give him facial hair? He obviously is somebody who mutated with, like, a beard and a mustache. But I love how this toy looks. I love how you have, like, all these tentacles sticking out all over the place. It is just one gross, gruesome-looking guy, you know, and I think that's great. I like how you actually have on the body here, you still have muck, like, all over him. Um, down here, you see this little shape here? Um, sometimes people have been making that into like a, a flower, but I think the 2012 cartoon got it right where they made this thing kind of like, um, I would say maybe he's like esophagus or something like that. It looks like it's supposed to be some kind of, um, like organ or something. You can see a little teddy bear in there. There's this huge spider. I really love how you can see all the veins inside of his stomach. You know, that just adds to the, the creep factor, the gross out, 
Um, on the new Super 7 toy that I'll show a little later, they actually have the picture of Garson Grunge as a human on his name tag right here. And I just like how he had just this ooze and muck all over the place. Um, on the back here, if we remove the muck pack, you can see up here he's got like a, a fish skeleton. He's got like a... It's kind of like a... I kind of think of it as like a, you know, like a giant pimple or something like that, like ooze and gunk out, really disgusting stuff. You got what looks like, like a can right here. You got another spider here with a spider web. You know, that was one of my favorite things, too, about it's just like all the weird little insects and stuff they'd put on their guys, like general tra uh, trag and all that kind of stuff. Over here, it looks like there should be painted veins. And then you have an apple core on his butt. <laughs> And then you have this hole that goes through his stomach. And, you know, even back then, like, just having a character with a hole in their stomach like this was pretty, uh, you know, unusual. You didn't really see this kind of stuff back in, in toy design. And I love this thing. I thought it was great. You know, because, like I said, when you're a kid, you want really gross, really weird things. And, you know, this guy just fit the mold perfectly. Now, the perfect, the point of this hole here is that you have his muck pack. And you're supposed to fill this muck pack with uh, with uh, muck or mutagen. And it's supposed to travel down here and go through this hole in the back. And go through these three little holes. They almost appear too small. Uh, and we'll see how it works whenever I check later on when we check out the action f feature. But, you know, it travels through here and then comes out of this hole and pours out the back and the front. Alright, so if we take a look at the arms here... Uh, let's start with this arm. Now, first, you have, like, a bug up here. And I love how he has, like, actual fungus and mushrooms growing on top of him. You have, like, giant worms coming out of crevices and holes, which is just kind of creepy, you know? Just thinking about that, like, a worm going through your body and poking out holes. I've actually had nightmares. Um, I remember one time I was in high school, and I fell asleep listening to um, the One Tool album. And I just had this weird dream where these these worms kept on, like jumping into my skin and they were like traveling through like uh different holes and i would you know pull them out like that's what this reminds me of and you know i love that kind of stuff because it's just it's kind of freaky and kind of gross you know i love i loved as a kid when toys wouldn't uh you know treat me like a kid i love how you have flies on here that's really cool looking over here you have another like boil or pus filled giant pimple or cre uh crater or something like that you got more veins on the arm and then even here like his hand you got the you have the, another worm there and i just love how his hand is partially a skeleton right you can see the skeletons you can see the bones of his hands like almost like the muck is like melting off of the bones same thing with down here in the forearm it's like the muck is just melting off and you can see the the bone, the forearm bones underneath. Like, that is just wonderful. And again, like the hole in the stomach, that's just something you did not see back then, you know, in 1990. So this thing was, you know, it was very unique back then, and it is still pretty unique nowadays. Over here on this arm, you know, you got more flies, you have more veins. You have these giant balls. I don't know what they're supposed to be. I guess maybe more boils or something like that. You got another fly. I like how his, uh, his uniform is ripped, you know, along these things. Uh, you got a can back here. And then on this arm, you just have a more growths, a lot more gr gross things going on here. And you have this giant worm coming out of his, uh, his wrist and coming down the forearm. It looks like his arm is like ripping apart here. I don't know. Again, you have the, the bony hands that look pretty awesome. On this side, you got a spider. I don't know what that is. That almost looks like a... I have no idea what that is. It's like a... almost looks like a, like an egg sac or something like that. Like, have you ever seen a praying mantis egg sac? Um, more veins. Just, just gross stuff all over the place. Um, down here, you got another worm and some more bugs. And some more uh, mushrooms, fungus. You know, of course, uh, down here, it's all unpainted. And it's going to be awesome when you finally get the Super 7 Ultimates and all this awesome detail is just completely painted. You know, I'm really excited for that. I like how he's got like a, he's got like a little trash can on this side, a little uh, carton of milk there. Um, his foot, you know, it's just look like, it looks like a giant foot. 
some bones are sticking out. And then uh, on this side, I like how his he doesn't even have a foot. He just has like a, you know, his his his, his leg is just like melting into muck and connecting to this manhole cover. That's great. And I like how you actually see like his knee bones popping out of this giant thing of muck and grossness. You got another worm. You got a bottle of soda down here. You got some bones, another apple core. And then you got a frog right here. <laughs> now, I don't know what's up with the frog, why this frog is hanging out on him, but I'll take it. I like frogs. You know, he looks cool. He's a nicely painted frog. I'm glad they actually painted this frog, and he's actually a different color than everything else on uh, Muckman. So he really stands out, and I think that's really cool. One thing I didn't notice or didn't mention about the arm here, it looks like you have this bone here. It looks like the bone is actually popping through his elbow, as if, like, you know, as he's bending his arm, the muck is, like, being stretched and, be, and, and popping that bone out of there. That is pretty awesome. Like most uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys, Muckman has the, you know, just the, uh, the, uh, the signature Playmates Ninja Turtle articulation. You got one neck joint. In this case, Muckman's head just spins around this direction. Uh, you have shoulder joints. You always got to have shoulder joints. And he has two points of articulation in his arms, but there are different points. Here you have a forearm that can rotate around. And this one here is uh, more at the elbow, so you can rotate this direction. And then you just have ball jointed hips. And, you know, like I said, with the frog, that's cool how that's painted differently than everything else. And in general, the stuff that is painted here is painted well. But like I said, once you finally see this guy and he's actually completely painted in, with the Super 7 Ultimus figure, it's just going to be, you know, phenomenal. It's just going to be an amazing looking action figure, and I can't wait to get that thing. Joe Eyeball. What a disgustingly lovable little dude. You know, the sculptors of Playmates always did an amazing job of injecting personality into all their characters. And, uh, you know... You know, granted, uh, most of them are just crazy goofballs, but life is life, and this little guy is full of life, you know? When you were a kid and you would see this guy, you, would ex you knew exactly how he would act in your toy stories. That is, you know, until you lost him like me. So, Joe Eyeball, you know, he, he's got no articulation because he's just this little tiny guy. You're just supposed to stick him in Muckman's muck pack and kind of leave him there or just kind of put him around. You know, so you could you can't really do too much with them, but you just got to pretend that you know things are happening with them. And all right, so his uh, his whole thing is he pretty much just looks like an alien slug. You know, he's got his eyes on these very long uh, eye stalks. I love his teeth, how he's missing teeth, and his grin is just so goofy. And I don't know. Now the thing is with uh, Joe Eyeball, he's got another eyeball down here, right? He's got three eyeballs. And this eyeball actually comes off of his tail. Now, lots of times when I used to look at this, I didn't even notice that that eyeball was there until I was really, like, inspecting this guy. And he's got, like, a bunch of sets of arms. It looks like he's got, like, finger hands up here, and he's got tentacles. Three, like, three sets of tentacles and one set of regular hands up top. Um, now, in the cartoon, in the Fred Wolf series, when they made Joe Eyeball... Uh, you know, they had his tail and they had a little squiggly thing at the end, but they didn't include the eyeball, probably because it would have been too hard to animate all the time. But, uh, you know, on the new Super 7 one, he will have the eyeball and it will be painted. Muckman has one weapon, and that is the Muck Gun. Now, I would have thought this would have had a cooler name, the Muck Gun, to be honest with you. I thought it would have been like some kind of rocket or, you know, like trash rocket or something like that. But no, it's the Muck Gun. And what's really cool about this thing is, uh, you know, it's just made out of all these little different pieces of trash, right? And mostly cans. So you got like a, a soda can here. Down here you have a couple of different kinds of cans. Like you have a can of worms, some peas. Um, what does that say? Something cola. So you have cola here. And of course it wouldn't be a Ninja Turtle toy without some kind of... Uh, a, a turtle death or something. Even though he's a good guy, he still has a can of turtle soup right here. I mean, come on. Like, what kind of bud is that? And then, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is supposed to be up here in the front where it's like kind of like cross-hatched. Um, up here, you have a ketchup bottle. And it looks like the ketchup bottle is uh, kept in place 
by this worm. Like, it wraps around it. You got to fly up here. And it's just cool how you have these little tiny, like, um, metal, like, pieces of metal screwing all these cans together. Right? Um, the grip here is just kind of like, um, it just looks like tape or, uh, yeah, just pretty much tape. But a pretty, pretty cool weapon. You know, this fits in his hand really easily. You just slide it on in and you're good, right? The only problem is, is that um, mine gets a little, I think it's because my joint is a little worn from being so old and being so overused. It's sometimes you can't like, you know, pose him in certain ways without it really just kind of continuing to rotate, which kind of stinks, but... It's like, uh, you know, you can't, you can only have him point it in so many ways. Like, it's kind of tough if you're, you're trying to, like, get him to pose on your, you know, your shelf with other guys. Like, you pretty much always have to have it where he's shooting straight like this. You know, sometimes if you, you kind of want it to be closer to his body. But, I don't know. It, I mean, it's, it's, this toy is like 21 years old, you know. You, oh my gosh, it's 31 years old. It's it's so old, but you know, what can you do? You know, this thing with the, the, the can of peas here, it probably should have been called the pea shooter, right? Right? Nah. Muckman's final accessory is the muck pack. And you know, just like Muckman, this thing is covered in some pretty awesome detail too. You got some fish bones here. You got uh, a can. You have like a bunch of goop and muck or mutagen coming out the the can on top here. And, of course, you got a, a piece of pizza right there because it wouldn't be a Ninja Turtle toy without a piece of pizza and also some turtle murder, right? And uh, the uh, the can here, you know, you could easily just pull it out and pop it in place. Sometimes mine gets a little loose and falls out unexpectedly, and most of the time it just kind of stays in place pretty well. So, you know, you only have like a little tiny bump here and here, and I'm sure a lot of people have just been, you know, worn down af after all these years. And the muck pack serves two purposes. For one, you put the uh, the muck or the mutagen in there, in the top here, and then it pours out of his, you know, his uh, his stomach and his back. And the second purpose of the muck pack is just to uh, hold his little buddy Joe Eyeball. And you know, like I said, with all the detail on this guy, you know, he has to be like, I don't know, if you think. I'd be curious if you think that he's the most detailed or if you think somebody else, like, beats him. Like, uh, you know, Mutagen Man has a lot of detail on him, too, and so does, um, uh, let's see here, Scumbug and all that kind of stuff. I, but I, I don't know. I just can't see how this guy is not the most detailed guy in this whole line. I mean, I just showed you, like, every single space on this guy, there's, like, something new. You know, it, it might be a, a fly that, you know, he might have multiple flies on him. But it's still like they did everything they possibly could to make every square, you know, inch if he was a regular size guy, right? You know, every s square area of his body is just like covered in some kind of gross, weird, extra detail. And you just never saw anything like that. So, like I said, I can't praise Muckman enough. I think that he's an amazing toy. He's like a, you know, he's kind of like the, the perfect mix of like Garbage Pail Kids and Ninja Turtles, to be honest with you. And... I don't know. I think he's pretty awesome. Before I show you Muckman's awesome muck or mutagen melting or whatever you want to call it action feature, um, first I want to talk about the Super 7 Ultimate Muckman. Now I'm just going to touch on this, uh, you know, very shortly because when this guy comes out, I'm going to be, I'm going to dedicate a whole video to him and I'm going to, you know, figure out everything that he has that is, you know, copied off of the original toy and how accurate they were and how amazing everything looks once it's finally painted. So, you know, I'll keep this brief, right? But, uh, I, you know, I just want to say that I really like the look of this guy a lot, you know? There are some Ultimates that have, you know, they kind of changed a little during the translation, kind of like Baxter's head or even Mondo Gecko a little bit, I think is just a little different than how he appears in the original toy line. But, you know, this one almost looks like an exact copy of the original toy. You know, he looks amazing, and he looks gigantic. Even Joe Eyeball looks as though he's huge, like almost the size of Donnie's upper torso. 
Um, you know, I love that every piece of garbage is painted. You know, it's like Super 7 uh, is finally fulfilling the childhood fantasy you had of painting all of these extra details. But, you know, you were too afraid because you thought you'd screw it up. <laughs> I know that's how I felt. Um, the only negative is uh, Muckman won't have any ooze action features. I'm pretty sure, I, I, I can't say for certain, I don't know 100% yet, but I've heard that he won't be able to have any kind of ooze playability at, for adults. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to remove the skull cap, and, uh, you know, there isn't going to be a hole that connects the muck pack to, you know, the hole in his stomach. Uh, so, you know, the lack of an action feature is, you know, it, it's not a deal breaker for me, because, uh, you know, you're paying like $45 for this guy. So, like, I wouldn't want to get, like, slime all over him anyways. Same as, like, the Mutage Man figure that came out uh, in the beginning of the year. Like, I don't want to fill him with water or mutagen because he was expensive. And I don't want to mess him up, you know? I need to keep mine mint. So, you know, I do understand, though, you know, if you want to have that ooze ability, I could understand why you would be upset about it, you know, 100%, right? But for me... It's, it's, you know, it's not a deal breaker. So, uh, but like I said, when he finally comes out or maybe when they start showing production picks, we'll, we'll know if we could remove the skull cap. But until then, that's all I really got to say about this guy. I'm just really excited to get him. I just wish, you know, Super 7 would pump these guys out a little faster. Okay, so before I end this video, there's one final thing I have to do. I have to put some ooze or mutagen in Muckman and, you know, see how he looks covered in goop. Um, I'll be honest with you. I've shot this like five times because I just can't find the slime with the correct consistency. Like I bought this slime at Target. What is, where's, the, where's the label? All right. Amazing slime, right? Very cool looking color. However, extremely thick. You know, would it move through the stomach? So then I also got the uh, the Nickelodeon slime. I have a few different colors of this. And, you know, I, I really like the colors of a lot of these uh, Nickelodeon slimes. But again, way too thick and extremely sticky. I actually used that when I was making my real Ghostbuster Gooper Ghost videos. It just moves so slow. I don't know why. And then I also got Play-Doh slime, right? And that was way too thick. Would not move quick as quickly as I needed. Then I had this, which I think that this could have had the right consistency, but since this is four years old, um, it's like, you know, it's almost like a giant uh, blob of goo, you know, like it doesn't move that fast, it doesn't separate. So finally, I ordered this, this new goo slime pack, which is made by uh, Mattel, and uh, I got this on Walmart. So I actually had most of this video finished, like, a week and a half ago, and I just was waiting, you know, trying to get the right kind of slime, and then it took a couple of days. So I ordered this from Walmart, but you can get it from Amazon. And, uh, you know, inside, you got the slime in this nice little package, and it actually moves pretty well. So I hope that it works out. And in order to try to be as authentic to the Ninja Turtle toys as I can, I also filled up my little, uh, my little mutagen container. And this slime is so runny, you know, it is way, it, it, it's just, it is a lot more runny than those, uh, those other stiff slimes. I don't know what's up with that. Why are they making them so stiff? So we pour some in the muck pack here. <laughs> Remove the cap. Uh, come on. Just went right through the from the head to the from the pack to the head. I filled the pack up first because it takes longer for it to come out. Oh come on. This is like super super goopy. So it's starting to come out now. I'm gonna put some more in that pack. See here. Oh shoot. Way too much. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. This slime is crazy. Well. <laughs> oh my god. So a little bit of the problem I have with this slime is that it is so much more runny than the other slimes I have. So as soon as you, you know, as soon as this slime starts to go, like it goes, you know, it doesn't like kind of hang there or anything like that. It just keeps on moving until it is gone. So unfortunately, uh, I'll have to try to redo the head here. Now, if you looked at the thumbnail to this, I would, that, the green goop coming out of his mouth in the thumbnail of this video was actually the, uh, the 2016 Ghostbuster uh, ectoplasm. Jeez Louise. Oh my gosh. This is, holy crap. So, <laughs> I got, the slime is everywhere. So the Mattel goo, uh, you know, that worked pretty well, but you know, it, it was pretty runny, probably a little too runny. You know, it looks awesome uh, uh, just to drape in this guy and muck and ooze and stuff like that. But I also kind of wish that the color was a little brighter or a little thicker. I don't know. I just can't find the right slime that I want for uh, to use with these older toys. Here you can see the, uh, the Ghostbusters 2016 slime that I was using. And like I said, that, that was moving super, super slow. But I do like the, the thick green color, you know, the darker green, because you can actually make it out a little more when you're looking at it. And, uh, you know, what kind of slime are you using? Let me know what you're using. Somebody once contacted me and said that they were making a... Uh, um, in my Gooper Ghost videos, they contacted me and said that they had a recipe to make a slime that was similar to the ectoplasm way back in the 90s. I don't understand why you can't find slime that's like that anymore. Is it like against regulations or what? What's up with that? But, uh, you know, so let me know uh, what you're using. And thanks for watching and talk to you later.